Hi students, this is Professor Wendy Gideon, and I'm broadcasting to you from our microbiology lab here at Palomar College. And if you're not one of my students, then welcome to my virtual classroom. If you are my students, I miss you guys, and here I am demoing the lab uh, solo today. So if you would open your books to page 151, your lab manuals, and here you're gonna find our activity on effective hand washing. So in this lab, we introduce you to the domain bacteria, which is a diverse group of prokaryotes. And if you're not aware, bacteria live everywhere. Even if you feel like you wash your hands regularly, Bacteria are a normal part of your skin. Um, it's what we call the skin microbiome. And so in this activity, we are going to find out what bacteria uh, live on my skin, because normally we have you test this, but we'll take a look at my skin and also hand washing techniques and learn about what hand washing techniques are most effective at removing bacteria from our hands. And this is a particularly timely as we are now not in class as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. So washing your hands is also effective for reducing the amount of viral particles on your skin. However, viral particles like the coronavirus are very small. In fact, they are nano particles, and we won't be able to culture them in our laboratory. So this experiment is particular to bacteria, although the technique here is effective for uh, many viruses as well. So but what we're going to do here is we're going to culture bacteria in petri dishes. And these are petri dishes that contain a nutrient source called agar. And in the lab, if we take a look here, it says that we're going to, we're going to have four plates. So if we zoom down a little bit at the bottom of page 151, summary of four plates. So we're going to have a dirty plate, dirty hands. We're going to wash, I'm going to wash my hands with water only. Then I'm going to wash my hands with soap and water. And then I threw in an additional plate. I'm going to also wash my hands with hand sanitizer, alcohol-based hand sanitizer. We'll take a look at that. And then we're going to divide a plate into half, and I'm going to test two objects that we can get the results on. Okay, so I've already labeled these plates, and I'm going to have move you guys so that you can see what plates look like hanging there. Okay, so these are petri dishes, and these petri dishes have a lid, and the material in there is called agar. It's a nutrient source, and it sort of has a consistency like solidified jello. So it's a semi solid. And always when we're using plates in microbiology, this is technically a microbiology experiment because we're dealing with microbes or organisms that are too small to be seen without a microscope. And so bacteria fall into that category. But normally what we do is we label the bottom of our plates, and I've already done that in Sharpie. And I don't know how clearly you can see that, but it says dirty plate number one, here's my initials, and today's date, which is March 16th, 2020. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna inoculate this plate with some dirty hands. And to make sure my hands are nice and dirty, I am going to take my hand right now and I'm gonna to touch the bottom of my shoe. Gross, I know, but there's lots of bacteria on the floor. That's the best way to control here. Make sure that I am starting with a good dirty hand. So I'm gonna remove the lid from this plate. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my fingerprints down and just lightly touch the auger not intensely talk, uh, touching him, and go ahead and put a thumbprint there as well. And then I'm gonna put the lid back on. So what I've done is I've, I've inoculated that with my fingerprints from my dirty, um, bottom of my dirty shoe. 
And although you might see a little bit of dirt that I've transferred onto that auger dish, you're not going to see bacteria because bacteria are single-celled organisms. And what we're going to do is we're going to be growing these single-celled organisms in an incubator so that tomorrow, maybe even two days from now, we will take a look at these plates and, and look for growth patterns called colonies on these petri dishes and more about that a little bit later, okay? So that's my dirty plate and I'm simply done with my dirty plate now. My second dish, if you can see the label there, it says number two water plates with my name and date along the edges. This is the one that now I'm gonna wash my hands with water only um, and then I'm going to transfer my fingerprints onto this auger plate to see um, how effective water is. So let's take a look here. So I'm at a sink and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the warm water. If you can see that, but turning on the warm water, I do have, I do have dirty hands because I just touched the bottom of my shoe and I'm just going to go ahead and wash my hands in water. Okay. And the recommended amount of time for washing our hands is about 20 seconds. So we're washing our hands, <clears throat> rubbing them together, and, um, and we'll go ahead and turn that off. Now I want to make sure I dry my hands before I transfer bacteria onto these dishes. So I'm going to sneak over here and get a paper towel to dry my hands off. And now I'm going to inoculate that water plate. So let's go ahead and zoom down on the water plate that I'm going to do. So here it is. Now what I need to do is turn it over and I need to take the lid off of that. Okay, and now I have my clean hand only with water though. I'm going to go ahead and transfer those same fingerprints and then do the thumbprint there, nice and light. Feels like jello is what that does. It feels like very kind of slimy almost, but that's um that's a gelatin material called agar again. Okay, and so that plate is done. All right. Third plate, soap. Okay, so here we want to test the effect of soap on hand washing. Okay. So I have to get my hands dirty again. This time I'm gonna wash for 20 seconds with soap and water, and then I will transfer that um, onto the soap plate. So I'm going back to the sink now. Going back to the sink, turning on the warm water again. This time I'm going to use soap. And I'm going to Rub my hands together, okay? That's really important in the effectiveness of soap that you rub your hands together for 20 seconds. And we say it's like the process of singing happy birthday to yourself is the amount of time you want to be washing your hands. Okay, so now I'm gonna dry my hands. And my computer just went on black there, so I'm hoping that it came back to life. It looks like it did. I just want to make sure my hands are nice and dry. So I'm getting some paper towels here. Okay, so after washing with soap and water, let's take a look. I'm going to do the other print. Okay, so here's that soap plate. I'm going to take the lid off there. Same, same fingers, okay, that now have been washed with, with soap. Okay, that's it. All right, next up, this was the one I threw in there. I'm going to again dirty my hand. And I'm getting my hand dirty so I can do the hand sanitizer test. Um, so here, a lot of us carry around with us this alcohol-based hand sanitizer. We're gonna find out how effective that is. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some hand sanitizer. I just got my hands dirty. And I'm gonna rub my hands together with the hand sanitizer, alcohol-based hand sanitizer, okay? And 
Now I'm going to take my hand sanitizer plate. I'm going to open the lid. And I'm going to do those same fingers again, making a print from the hand sanitizer cleaned hand. Okay, and that plate is done now. So now that leaves us to the, the last plate in our experiment. In this plate, you can see we can potentially test two different objects. And we do that by splitting the plate in half. So what I decided to test, I decided to do my cell phone surface, see how dirty that is. Um, and then I also decided to test my own body. I'm gonna do an ear, just do an ear swab in there. Okay, so I'm gonna transfer that onto this dish. Let's go ahead, go back to where you can see the dish. Okay, so you, now you can see the dish. You can see that I divided in half, perhaps, okay? And we're gonna do this transfer using some sterile swabs. And you can see there that I've got my cell phone and I'm gonna swab it. So I'm gonna take a cotton swab. I'm gonna actually moisten that cotton swab using some sterile water that I have on hand. So I'm gonna moisten that swab. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna swab the surface of my cell phone. You can see that. Yeah, you can see that in the camera there. So just the surface there that the, comes in contact with my hands all the time. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is take off the lid and then here on this side of the plate, I'm gonna go ahead and swab it with the cotton swab from the cell phone. Okay. Now I'm gonna repeat that with my ear. You can take a look here, let's see. How dirty is Professor Gideon's ear? Well, again, it's not really dirty. It's the fact that there are bacteria that live on our skin, and that's a good thing, actually, to have a healthy, we say healthy microbiome um, on our skin. We want these, we want these organisms there because they outcompete the pathogenic microbes. Um, that can colonize skin and can cause skin infections. So there are skin infections obviously caused by bacteria, but when you have a good amount of, of healthy, um, what we call probiotic or sort of good bacteria growing on the skin, you have a healthy microbiome, you're gonna prevent the pathogenic or the disease causing bacteria from growing. So we'll see what is going on. My, I don't have any ear infection, so I'm not, I'm not expecting to have anything um, any pathogens in my ear. I just expect there to be my, my normal microbiome in there. <laughs> so, hey guys, let's see. Let's see you there. I'm just gonna just not going deep into the ear, just along the surface of the ear, in, in, in the ear there. I'm gonna grab some microbes there. Cool. So now I have to transfer these onto my Petri dish, back to the Petri dish. Can follow along here. Let's get the phone out of the way. All right. So now I'm going to take my ear swab and we're going to swab here into the ear. Here we go. That's it. So now I've completed the experiment. Let's take a look at you again. Hi. Okay. So, oops. I want to do that. Hi there, so I have now completed the setup portion of the bacteria lab. So you observed me transfer bacteria from my shoe, the dirty plate, wash my hands with water only, transfer my fingerprints onto the water plate, wash my hands with soap and water, transfer that onto the soap plate, um, wash my hands with hand sanitizer and transfer my fingerprints onto that plate, and then also to test the surface of my cell phone as well as the, sur or the inner surface of my um, the ear. So I would like you to make a prediction with me on page 152. So there's a tan box, as you can see at the top of page 152. Which hand washing procedure do you expect will remove the most bacteria? Write your hypothesis here. So we tested three different hand washing procedures washing with water, 
only, washing with soap and water, and washing with hand sanitizer. So please write your hypothesis here. Second question is, which plate do you expect will have the highest number of bacterial colonies and the highest diversity of bacterial species? So out of the plates, the five plates, write your hypothesis here. And remember, a hypothesis doesn't have to be true. Um, we will find out. So what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna take this stack of five Petri dishes that we've made and I'm gonna put them into our 37 degree incubator that we have here in our microbiology classroom. You'll notice in step 11, it says in one week, observe the growth. However, if we, if we incubate them at 37 degrees Celsius, which by the way is body temperature or 98.6 Fahrenheit, we can expedite that process. So within one to two days, I should be able to have growth on these plates that I'll be able to um, do part two of this lab. So I will see you next time.